Here's a piece of cake, Doc. A piece of cake. Hey, I thought you said this is going to be tough, Doc. You call this tough? Hey, Doc. Doc. I'm having a little problem breathing, huh, Doc? I'm getting a little hot. Yeah, yeah. Listen to what I'm saying, Doc. Uh, ease up a little, Doc. Uh, ease up. Are you with me, Doc? Uh, come on. He's up. I, I, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Come on. Stop it. Are you looking at me? I can't take it. Stop it right now, Doc. Help me. Stop it for Christ's sake, Doc. Stop it. Help me. Help me. Help me. See how powerful he is, Bubba. Doctor. Watch him move. Just get him out of here. Everyone looks strange to you. I'll find my way. They're staring at you. They're closing in. I won't let them stop me. Smothering you. They mean nothing to me. You're running for your life. They're going to catch you, Laura. the child. He's too close to the edge. Oh. No, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, my God, he's too close to the edge. Now look down, Henry. Oh, I can't. Think of oh. falling, Henry. Oh. You're falling. Oh. Falling. Oh. Falling. Very good, Henry. In the light of these results, Mr. Chairman, I would say we're well on schedule with our research. The patients respond at a different rate to the method depending on the depth of their phobia. However, in my estimation, I would say that they're uh, 70% through their work with me. Dr. Ross, I have on a few occasions been present when one or another of your patients has left the treatment room. They were, to say the least, emotionally overwrought. How long do they continue in this state after the treatment? Not unreasonably long. As I'm sure you know, Dr. Clemens, the phobia is maintained because the patient's anxiety prevents him from getting close enough to see through his irrational fear. 
In the treatment, I compel the patient to confront the source of their phobia in increasing intensities, uh, flooding them with their anxiety in order to get them beyond it, back to a more reasonable perception of reality. But as their anxiety increases? I use relaxation techniques to help them learn to tolerate the increasing levels without giving in and trying to avoid their phobic object. As a point of interest, Dr. Ross, may I ask how you arrived at your theory? <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, it's based on a personal experience. When I was a child, I was uh, afraid of the water. I didn't want to learn to swim because of it. And uh, finally, one day, my father threw me in the water. And I swear, plus of therapy. Well, Dr. Ross, you have met the Ethics Committee's concern for the welfare of your research subjects, for which we thank you. not to do when they find themselves in a similar situation. It's, well, it's a case of a psychoanalyst not being able to take her own meds. Mm -hmm. But it's over. Please. That's what you told me when you left me, wasn't it? And I was smothering you. Oh, look, Peter. I don't even know who that jealous woman was. It wasn't me. Honestly. Let me prove it. As a friend. Please. Please. <laughs> Oh, come on. Alice, this is a silly conversation. We never stop being friends. Good. I'm very glad you made up. Sorry, I didn't get to hear your full report. Oh. Uh -huh. Do you Thank you. I'm intrigued by your research. Mm -hmm. Well, as a psychoanalyst, I am concerned with the unconscious motivation. Now, what happens to that? Well, I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think anybody's ever found the unconscious. Hey, 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 no little pretty. Hello? Good luck. Hey, Barbara, hope you have a real good time. Going to? A little park. Not too far from here. Then what? Then you're going to take yourself a walk. Then you leave the park. You walk three blocks west, you take the subway, and you go downtown, you buy yourself something. Hat, gloves, scarf. Whatever you like. What if I panic? You won't. You're the most advanced in the group. They'll face your phobia head on. I can. Mm hmm And after you bought something, you're to come straight to my house. I'm going to be there all afternoon trying to catch up with our research. I'll drive back to the hospital. But your house, I, I don't even know where it is. I'll show you. It's not far. I can jog from my house to the clinic. Take six minutes. See up here? That's Rose Park. Just ahead is my house and my street. It's 181 Argus. 181 Argus? Mm-hmm. Oh, 
the room, Mr. Casey. Afternoon, Doctor. I'm just finishing up. Oh, good. Got some work to do. Dr. Ross. Yeah. It's Thursday. Well, what are you doing home on a Thursday? Oh, I dropped the game. What time is it? Oh, we're about to two. That's the final. I gotta go. We want the boys to lose their stop forward. Oh, Mrs. Casey. I can ask your favor. I have a patient coming by, Miss Gray. Would you explain to what happened and uh, ask her to wait for me? Uh, sure, doctor. Don't you worry. I'll take care of it. Thank you.
Tolan went over when she heard about it. Very good she was with Mrs. Casey. Very helpful altogether. She wanted to come back and wait for you here. We have Mrs. Casey's statement. She told us where to find you when it happened. Isn't it a little unusual for someone from California to play hockey? How did you know I was from California? <laughs> well, come now, Doctor. You're not exactly just another face in the crowd. You're, uh... Your program was front page news not too long ago. And the deceased was one of your experimentees, wasn't she? She was one of my patients. So she was, so she was. How would you describe your reaction to the murder, Doctor? Were you surprised? Yes. Of course. Well, I'm not. What surprises me is that you don't seem to realize that it was supposed to be you in that drawer downstairs. You. That experimentee died by accident, not intent. Ross's associate, Dr. Toland. We haven't met before, but I'm a great admirer of your work. Thank you. Peter and I went to one of your exhibitions last year. He bought me one of your smaller sculptures. I forget the occasion. I just have a few more questions to ask Dr. Ross, and then we can all go. Does anyone else, uh, I mean, other than Mrs. Casey, have a key to your apartment? Why did uh, Barbara Gray go to your apartment this afternoon? I told her to. She was an agoraphobe. We thought that she'd do well today going downtown for crowds. Whatever happened, she was supposed to come to my house afterwards. Miss Sinclair, do you know any of Dr. Ross's experimenty patients? No. I want to see the picture of them at Peter's place. It's too bad. I thought I could make use of your woman's intuition. Dr. Toland is too close to the subject, so she says. Someone wants to kill you. I can't believe it. Well, you better believe it. And you better start thinking about who wants you dead. You're somebody's target. Maybe you should think about taking a holiday. California's nice this time of year. We have to seal off your apartment, Dr. Ross. Where will I find you? He'll be at my place. I'll drive Miss St. Clair home. If you want to reach me, call the hospital. My answering service will get in touch with me. Peter. 
Consider yourself a ladies' man, Doctor. I'm sorry, I uh, don't quite understand what you're driving at. <laughs> well, everybody loves you. Your ex-wife and kids in California, your ex-mistress, and your present girlfriend. In fact, someone loves you so much they'd like to send you to Kingdom Come. You didn't tell me Alice Toland had a key to your apartment. No. I've just been wandering around the hospital this morning, looking, listening. I just asked Dr. Toland if she had a key, and uh, she turned it over to me. Oh, I'm not here to pry into your private affairs. Uh, I'm here to try to save your life. You mind? Of course, as far as I'm concerned, the prime suspects are your experimentees. I'm going to stick with them, at least until I'm satisfied that they're ruled out. You're meeting with them this morning. They're waiting for me right now. I want to be present. I'm bound by a standard of professional confidentiality. <laughs> oh, yes, I know. You know, I saw a TV show about that. The psychiatrist was asked what he'd do if uh, the patient of his confessed to having committed some major crime. Would he betray his patient's confidence? Well, the psychiatrist thought about it, and then he said... Well, you know what he said. I could venture an educated guess, yes. He said he thought it'd be best for the psychiatrist to persuade the patient to go to the police himself. <laughs> well, that'd be just fine. But with you, Dr. Ross, there won't be any confession. I mean, you being the target and all. So why can't I watch them? There won't be any breach of confidentiality. I mean, it's not like you were going to give them a treatment. Or... You are just going to talk about Barbara and things in general, aren't you? I think it can be arranged. I've 
watch the hospital. They'll arrange a special memorial service for Barbara later this week. We'll all go together. She was a fine lady. Yeah. She was faster than the rest of us. What a bright thing. She had a lot of class. But I can't get over doctors. If it hadn't have been Barbara, it would have been you. So she wouldn't have been here today and... Oh, but Kim, you wouldn't have... Ex-boxer. Armed robbery. Who's that in Killed his doctor? wife's lover. Well, who could it be? Somebody from the hospital? Dr. Clegg? He hates Ross's guts. Ross is doing all the big treatment work. That medical magazine I showed you? The one with all our names in it? And what it said about brilliant young behaviorist? Didn't have to mention old Clegg. I was talking to school too. You know, most psychiatrists are nuts. Johnny Kennedy. Grand Theft Auto. Record a mile long. Mr. Timmy Ditz. I'm sure she'd have found. Which found do you mean? Tolan. I was Tolan. How the hell did he get the parole board to agree to letting them come and go the way they do? That's right. She still has the hospital. I, I, I see the way she's looking at him. All I'm saying is, she's playing it cool. She don't like him like she used to. Love and hate gets mixed up sometimes. Yeah, yeah, jealousy. Who's that little guy with the bald head? Oh, and Henry. Dr. Tolan and Dr. Clegg are no more involved than you are. I trust you. I trust you completely. Just as you trust me. And we mustn't permit this terrible tragedy to interfere with our work. We mustn't let them shut us down. Could they do that? There is a possibility. Remote, I hope. And if it happens? We all go back to jail. Look, Doc. I'm not going back, okay? No, I'm never going back. You think I you think I spend all this time in this in this torture chamber just to go back? No way! Johnny, I'm not saying they're shutting us down. I'll fight any such proposal. I'll use all the influence I've got, and I've got plenty. That's what you say. That's what you hope. Now come on, tell the truth. If they want to, if they want to. We could kill this program in a minute. Johnny, if they're not shutting us down. Straight. What have you been doing, lying on your back all day? Sorry, Inspector. I guess I wasn't expecting the sergeant to push me. Oh, is the sergeant been treating you badly? Eh? No. I mean, we're not interested in what you mean here. This is a police station, not a hospital. I reckon you can tell the difference by now. Yes. I thought so. You've been in and out of police stations enough. No, that's not what I meant. I just told you that I don't care what you mean. But we still have to teach her the difference. No. 
She says, yes, and then he says, no, what are you trying to do? Give me a hard time. Ferguson gang, rocking banks, wasn't it? Yes. You were the expert at safe cracking, you said the charges. Yeah. Last time during the getaway, you couldn't follow your partners. They had to jump from one building to another. Oh, a teeny little three foot jump, but you couldn't make it. No, we could. So you got caught. That's right. And now you were the gang all cozy in the hospital. What kind of con did you use on that damn fool, Ross? It wasn't a con. The warden told us they were looking for guys with phobias. I got this phobia about heights and falling. You don't say. Show some respect. Now sit down. <laughs> when I tell you to sit down, I don't mean fall down. Oh, honey, what are you trying to do? Do you need a phobia? <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I don't want to. Please don't be taken away. I can't stand it. Uh, stop making such a fuss. Back your chair. No, I won't. I'm going to leave. No, you're not going to leave. You're going to finish the treatment. Now you come and sit down. Months. Months. Touch it. 
this one.
it started. I'm not in training for the Olympics, you know. Just did a friendly jog around the park. Don't you ever get out of breath? Gotta keep fat. Why don't I lose my place on the team? How far do you run when you're alone? Six miles. Twice around the park. Come on. This is the park Barbara was walking yesterday, isn't it? Barbara? Barbara Gray? Yeah. It's a good patient. Is that going to be her epitaph? She was a good patient? Jenny. Sweetheart, I'm a doctor, I'm a scientist. Worms keep on objectivity. Objectivity? That's such a callous word, Peter. A woman was killed yesterday. Don't you feel any pain? Jenny, I've got nothing to say to that. Peter, wait. Just a minute. Peter, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Jenny, I love you. I've never cared for anyone as much as I care for you. Will you try to remember that? Hmm? Not gonna continue my life. Take me with you. Well, let's go. <laughs> oh, damn. I gotta get to the car phone. Is that the hospital? Yeah. Oh. I told him not to bother me unless it was an emergency. Come on. Come on, I'll race you to the car. <laughs> no. Assaulted a policeman and took his gun, held a young girl hostage, and stole two cars at gunpoint. Now he's up there and says he'll jump if I or any of my men come here. All he wants is to talk to you. Is there anything else I should know? No, nothing. Peter, be careful.
get my sleep. Trying to save his life, and hands on the chair. Yesterday. You almost made it. You went up to the top of that structure all by himself. Alone. I understand what that means. It means with a few more treatments, I might have him cured. It's not your fault, Peter. You can't blame yourself. I'm not blaming myself. She said she was one of your strongest supporters. Oh. Tolan. You know something? Sometimes I think that you are the only support that I have. I gotta go. Mm -hmm. I can't. are very sympathetic. I don't think the hospital is really bad by all this business. No, but is Ross? Oh, here he comes now. I'd like to have a few words with him. Peter? I think we better talk alone. Good morning. Good morning. Come sit down. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I'll see you all later. Well, thank you. You really run the gauntlet. Tell me, was it an accident or a suicide? I don't know how to answer that. Well, according to the Freudian model, there's no such thing as an accident. Henry Owen killed himself because he was guilty. Guilty of what? Of making an attempt on your life and killing Mrs. Gray instead. Such a thing happened? Yes. The police are of the same opinion. Inspector Barnes phoned me, and he said as far as they're concerned, the whole case is closed. Are you all right? Yeah, of course. You're 
intend to continue with the program? No question. Well, the committee and I are behind you all the way. In that corner, you'll see. Oh, come on, get out of it. And he said we should trust him. Okay, okay, I heard. Well, look what the hell happened to him. Well, what do you know? Do you think Ross had a choice? I'm telling you the way that it happened is the way it is. And he is the one that let Barnes fuck around and had his head. Look! This ain't getting us nowhere. Say. Uh, would you like to talk? No. I'm feeling so good today. I understand how difficult this is for you. It's difficult for me, too. I like that. Maybe we shouldn't have had the treatment today. It's okay. Wake up tomorrow. Dr. Ross? Do you really believe Henry tried to kill you? No. following you, but I couldn't catch up. I'm sorry I was mean to you. I've come for my treatment. I'm glad. Let's get to work. Come on. So you feel up to it? Yes, I think so. Today we're going to see something different. you. Watch them, Laura. The men are all over you, Laura. Feel them touching you. Turn around. Go ahead. Watch. 
Sit back. And a girl. Sit back. That's it. Now, I want you to take a few deep breaths. That's a girl. Breathe in. Come on, come on. And let it out slowly. That's a girl. Now smile for me. You're going to be all right. doesn't answer his beep, but he can't be found. He's at the rink. Pardon me? If he doesn't answer, he's at the rink. Then I'll go and get him. Did you reach Dr. Collins? Yes, sir. She's on her way from the university right now. Don't stand there. Get Ross. Yes, sir. Here, sir. This man and Johnny Benuti. Take them into custody. Yes, 
Yes, sir. I didn't do it. I wouldn't harm that little girl. I love that little girl. Anybody hurt her, I'd kill her. Well done, Dr. Ross. That's a pretty wicked shot you got there. You really got the killer instinct, haven't you? I wish. Yeah, I know. I used to, I used to play a defense a long time ago. Eh? Can you come here to talk? Yeah, no, sir. Inspector Barnes wants to see you. Who It's Laura Adams. She's dead. She wants to talk to you. Take us have a shower. We'll be outside. And yeah, make it a fast one, okay? Son of a bitch is lying. I can smell it. I know it, but he won't admit it. What would he lie about? He knows where Johnny Venuti is, but he won't tell me. What about Johnny? He's gone. Either he or this one here murdered Laura, and I'm going to nail one or the other if I have to tear them both to bits. Murdered Laura? The coroner phoned. It wasn't an accident. Somebody held her under. Not me. Not me, Dr. Ross. And not Johnny. We was playing cards the way we always do. Why did Johnny run, Bubba? When we see Laura's body, he just took off. But he'll be back, Dr. Ross. He always comes back. Always? Yes. Sometimes he goes and picks up a girl or goes to a movie downtown. And I cover for him sometimes, but not now. I don't know where he's at. Wheeler, put out an APB on Johnny Benuti. Where are you going, Ross? Fine, Johnny. Wheeler? You owe me. What do you mean? Nobody but you, Barnes, and I know what happened during Henry Owen's interrogation. Did Owen, uh... He did. It wasn't me. It was Barnes set it up. The commissioner will find you equally guilty. You're trying to blackmail me. That's a pretty serious offense. So is mistreating a prisoner. What do you want? I want half an hour before you put out the ATB. I want to find Benuti myself. You got 15 minutes. <laughs> I'll be delayed, Jenny. I'll be there as soon as I can. Can you see more about Laura? Barnes wants to question Johnny about it. They can't find him. I want to find him first. Peter. Jenny, just wait till I get there. Jenny. I'll be right here. Who 
Okay. Okay, hold on. Are you uh, all right? I really done it to myself. I'm gonna have to uh, go back and uh, finish my sentence. But uh, I can't. I can't. Kill myself first. I'm not kidding. Oh, don't worry, please. Why don't you sit down? I don't feel so good. I think I'm gonna be sick. Yeah, I'm not good. I'm bad. No, I wouldn't say you were bad. Yes. Uh, I always, I always been bad. That was good. I never had, I never had the uh, guts for a robbery or nothing like that. Cars is one of my thing. I, I, I don't, I don't think nothing about like stealing cars. You know what happens a lot? Yeah, I heard. Yeah. She, she Give me a funny feeling, though, you know, when I, um, I, uh, I saw her body. I think that she, I don't know, it was like, it was like Bama and me was next. Come on, Doc. I can't wait all night. I'm sure he's coming as fast as he can. Oh, Jesus. What? What? Did you call a cop? No. Did you? Somebody stop the elevator, please. Later, Johnny arrived at your apartment saying Ross had told him to come and wait for him. Yes, I told you all that before. That's the extent of your involvement. Yes. Very well, Miss St. Clair. Now, Doctor, after leaving the hospital, how long before the movie told you? Five or ten minutes. I took the call in my car. Who put it through? The call service. He said he was a friend of mine. I guess to a place. 
Why were you so late arriving in the Sinclair's? You should have been there before us. Maybe you were. I'd hope to be. I wanted to take John into the hospital. <clears throat> I got stopped running a red light. You were an officer in Vietnam? Along with a couple hundred thousand others. You had instruction in demolition. You could kill Barbara. Are you accusing me of murder? Who the knows what you were saying to Henry? He could have said or done something out there, something we couldn't see or hear. You could have murdered Laura. You've been in and out of the patient's room so often the ward no longer notices you. In fact, no one could say when they'd last seen you in the corridor. No one. Oh, you were where I was. Oh, yes, 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 the hockey rink. And conveniently, the attendant didn't see you arrive, so I don't know when you got there. Are you accusing me? Is this your gun? You know damn well it is. Why are you keeping the hospital? Where else should we keep it? You and the others have been telling me someone's trying to kill you. Where's my sign on in the service? I'm sure you've checked the serial numbers and all that. Something about this whole thing smells to high heaven. I know it. I sense it. I feel it. All your alibis are just a little too packed. I'd arrest you. Except for one thing. There's no motive. All that's lacking is a motive. There's nothing that I can see. You arrogant, unconscionable bastard. When you discover the mine, let me be the first to know. I'll get right to the point, Peter. Your program is finished. There will be no further experiments with implosion therapy in this hospital. I'm sorry. Peter, I think I can speak for all of us. We're just as disappointed as you are. But I'm sure you'll have other opportunities. There'll be other hospitals, other universities. Let me reassure you that nothing negative need be said about this. We intend to keep as low a profile as possible. How's Bob? He had to be medicated last night. He's sleeping now. The warden is sending a man down to pick him up. He'll be back in prison this evening. Well, I'll go see if he's awake. No more treatments, Peter. Shut down. You made yourself perfectly clear, Dr. Clyde. Certainly you don't object if I go and say goodbye. Well, the press is waiting. Would you like to be present? No. Thank you. Am I in the wrong office? No. Come in. I didn't know you. 
we shared an office. We don't. Is this files? Yes. I'm just about to glance through them. With or without his permission. Look, Miss Sinclair. There is no reason for you and I to be enemies. My fondness for Peter in no way affects your relationship. He's deeply attached to you. And I to him. Oh, what are you searching for? Peter won't mind. I thought I might find some hint, some clue as to what's been happening that Peter may have overlooked in his records. Four out of five patients in this project are dead now that deaths must link up somehow. And do they? He walked in on me before I had a chance to find out. Where is Peter? He went down to see Baba King to say goodbye. Say goodbye? Finished here. Yeah. I thought that would happen. Tell me. How was Peter last night? Johnny's death must have affected him terribly. But I'm sure he didn't show it. That magnificent attachment. As a doctor, he has to remain objective. You know that. But in his own personal life, he does show it. I've seen it. I saw it when he told me about the death of his sister. I didn't even know he had one. Yes, he did. She, um, she drowned. He tried to save her, but he couldn't. How old was he at the time? Uh, seven. That's why he's afraid of water. And when his father threw him in, forcing him to swim, he must have seen it as a punishment. He must have seen it as a punishment. As if his father wanted him to drown, too. He blames himself. King's room. I want to talk to Peter. Where's Bubba's room? One floor down. Could you tell me where Bubba King's room is, please? Well, actually, I'm looking for Dr. Ross. Well, Dr. Ross has taken Mr. King to the treatment room. Room 111, down the hall. Okay, thank you. Peter. Peter. Penny, what a nice surprise. Nonsense. What's happened is for the best. I'm ready to move on. I'm glad to hear that. What do you think about Houston? What do you mean? Well, I think it would suit. It's got great hospitals, good clinics, handsome endowment fund. I could do my experiments, lecture some of the more important hospitals. I don't know, Peter. Well, I do. 
I think that we could find a wonderful house, a big backyard, probably even strike oil. <laughs> you are a man, you know that. Where's Bubba? You finished his treatment? Bubba? Who's here? We've been taken away from him. Not letting him go. But that would have been fair to the others. Fair to be punished, too. Peter, you don't know what you're saying. But they were in the balance and found guilty. <laughs> guilty? I gave them a chance. I built this room for them. I gave them the rooms. I gave them the screens. I gave them the images. I wouldn't get better. I tried. God knows. <laughs> I tried. But they wouldn't be cured. They wouldn't swim, so they had to drown. I won't listen to you. No! No! You are worthless. Oh, Drown in the family pool. I couldn't get to her in time. I bet that that was the bubble myself. And I waited and I planned ever since. Kept that snack going. And then the six cities. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life in a chemical straitjacket. <laughs> 